गुड मॉर्निंग गर्ल्स होप एवरी वन इज सेफ एट होम ओके वेलकम टू आर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग रिविजन क्लासेस ओके द लास्ट रिविजन सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट रिक्वायरमेंट एनालिसिस एंड स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड डिजाइन फेज सो दीज आर द कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू द यूनिट टू ओके नाउ लेट एस बिगिन विद यूनिट थ्री पार्ट वन कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज फंक्शनल ओरिएंटेड सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइन सो बिफोर वी बिगिन विद फंक्शनल ओरिएंटेड सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइन फर्स्ट लेट एस revise what do you mean by a software design or what activities are performed during this design okay so generally once you had entered into the design phase we perform two main activities one is high level design which is also called as preliminary design and the other one is the detailed design during high level design the outcomes of this high level design are the modules uh, call relationship between those modules and the interfaces required to make calls for the functions within the modules okay so these are the outcomes of the high level design and once we had completed with the high level design then we go to the detailed design and in detailed design for each module we identify what are the data structures required and at the same time we try to write algorithms for each and every module so that means during detailed design in the, uh, the outcomes of this detailed design are nothing but the data structures and the algorithms which are used for implementing the modules okay so one, once we had completed with this detailed design then we go go with the next part that is nothing but the coding okay now let us discuss about functional oriented software design why functional oriented software design okay why functional oriented software design means generally in order to perform design activities we usually follow two different approaches one is functional oriented software design and the other one is object oriented software design so coming to the functional oriented software design if at all your implementation language your implementation programming language is a procedural oriented one then we go with the functional oriented software design and if at all your implementation programming language is object oriented one then we go with the object oriented software design so depending on our programming language depending on our implementation programming language we choose uh, either of the approaches so other than these two approaches we are also having two new approaches those are aspect oriented approach and the other one is client server approach okay but generally we will be making use of these uh, functional oriented and the object oriented approach okay now let us briefly discuss about this functional oriented software design approach okay so in the functional oriented software design approach um, we we start with the like uh, we refer the um, rare srs document and we identify uh, what are the various requirements of the uh, customer okay now th those requirements can be termed as a functions okay so during this uh, during the this uh, high level design uh, what we are doing each high level functions are successively decomposed into more detailed functions and in order to decompose this high level functions into more detailed functions we are following a principle called top down decomposition principle okay so once the decomposition is completed then finally the detailed functions are mapped to a module structure so that means we represent the call relationships among these modules okay so what we are doing here first we are first by reading the srs document we had identified what is the major requirement so that requirement is now termed as a function okay that is high level function now that high level function is successively decomposed into more detailed functions by following a top down decomposition approach and finally the detailed functions are mapped to a module structure that means a structure chart is generated so one of the methodology called sasd methodology it is having the essential features of several important functional oriented design methodologies that means SAS, uh, sasd methodology is um, um, fulfills mo most of the features of this functional oriented uh, design approach so generally in this functional oriented design approach we are performing two main two main activities right one is the high level design and the other one is the detailed design so in order to implement this high level design we can make use of this sasd methodology okay sasd methodology is used to implement the high level design activities okay so 
coming to the SASD methodology. In SASD, SA stands for structured analysis and SD stands for structured design. So generally this technique was developed from the following methodologies like constant and Jordan's methodology, Hartley and Peerbus methodology, Gain and Sersen's methodology, DeMarco and Jordan's methodology. Okay. So SASD technique can be used to perform high level design. So coming to the overview of SASD methodology. So this SASD methodology consists of two various activities that is structured analysis and the structured design. During structured analysis, the SRS document is transformed into a graphical structure that's nothing but a DFD that is data flow diagram. Okay, the SRS document is transformed into data flow diagram. That means the functional decomposition takes place here. Okay, during structure analysis, we identify the requirements of the customer by using the SRS document and now that requirements are decomposed and they are represented in the form of a data flow diagram. Okay, that is done in the structured analysis. Once we are done with the data flow diagrams, then we go to the next activity that is structured design. So during structured design, the DFD model is transformed into the structure chart. That is a module structure is formalized. So with this we, we, we will be ending with, uh, we, we can end up with the high level design. Okay. So in order to generate the structure chart, what we are doing first we need to transform the SRS document into data flow diagrams and then transform this data flow diagrams into the structure chart. Okay. So this represents the structured analysis and structure design methodology. Okay. So in this figure you can see that uh, on the SRS document the structured analysis activities are performed in order to transform SRS document into DFD model. And again we perform structure design in order to transform this DFD model into the structure chart. Okay. So in this structured analysis generally we give much importance to the functional decomposition. What do you mean by this functional decomposition? So during this functional decomposition each function is analyzed and hierarchically decomposed into more detailed functions. Simultaneous decomposition of high level data into more detailed data takes place during this functional decomposition. That means we are having a major function that is a high level function. Now that high level function is um, divided into sub uh, low level functions or more detailed level functions. Okay. So this functional decomposition generally for generally uses two main principles. One is the uh, top down decomposition and the other one is the divide and conquer technique ok now coming to the structured analysis so as we know this structured analysis it transforms a textual problem description into a graphical model here textual problem description is nothing but requirements which are described in the SRS report ok so in the SRS report the requirements are represented textually ok so now that textual problem description is turned into a graphical model. So that is done using the data flow diagrams. Okay. This data flow diagrams graphically represents the results of the structured analysis. That is we are performing a function decomposition right in structure analysis. Okay. That decomposition is graphically represented using these DFDs. All the functions represented in the DFD is mapped into a module structure that means whatever the functions we had represented that is whatever the decompositions of the functions we had represented in the DFD now those are mapped into a tree like structure called module structure that's nothing but the structure chart it can also be termed as a software architecture so in the software architecture is refined through detailed design so that's whatever the st structure chart is generated or software architecture is generated that is re refined through detailed design in order to get the algorithms okay so coming to the differences between structured analysis and structure design so generally the purpose of the structured analysis is to capture the detailed structure of the system as a user views it 
and the purpose of the structure design is to arrive at a form that is suitable for implementation in some programming language so during structure analysis we are capturing the detailed structure of the system as the user views it that means we are representing all the requirements of the customer in the graphical manner okay that will be easier for the for any customer to understand but coming to the structure design okay so here we arrive at a form that is suitable for implementation in a programming language that means once we uh, once we complete the structure design we end up with the structure chart okay uh, that structure chart will help us to identify the data structures and it, it also help us to write the algorithms for various modules okay so it is completely concentrating on implementation purpose okay next the results of structured analysis can be easily understood even by ordinary customers why because it doesn't require any computer knowledge it directly represents customer's perception of the problem and it uses customer terminology for naming different functions and data okay so these are the reasons why the results of the structured analysis that is the dfds are very easier to understand by the customer okay next the results of the structured analysis can be reviewed by the customer to check whether it captures all their requirements so this will help the customer to check to check once again whether all the requirements are covered or not so once again in the sense once already the customer has gone through his requirements by seeing the srs document okay now once the dfd model is completed now again he can cross check whether all the requirements are properly mentioned or not okay so as i said you this structured analysis is based on the principles of top down decomposition approach and divide and conquer principle okay these two principles are used for function decomposition okay by applying these two principles each high level function is independently decomposed into detailed functions and the graphical representation of analysis results using data flow diagrams these dfds are also called as bubble charts okay now coming to the dfd what is this dfd dfd is a data flow diagram which is an elegant modeling technique which is useful not only to represent the results of the structured analysis but it can also be applicable in other areas like whenever you want to show some flow of documents or items in any organization so in that case you can make use of this dfds that is in order to represent the flow of information or the flow of order of uh, processing okay in that cases you can make use of this data flow diagrams so this dfd is a hierarchical graphical model that shows different processing activities or functions of a system and the data interchange among these functions that is the dfd will represent the functions or activities and it also show how the processing activities are performed and how the data interchange among these activities or functions takes place okay what is the dfd it shows the different processing activities of fun or functions of a system and data interchange among these functions so it is useful to consider each function has a processing station that means like in the requirement analysis we identified the requirements now those requirements are termed as a functions in design phase okay so now in while representing the functions in the form of a data flow diagram okay each function is now considered as a processing station that means each function will consume some input data and it produces some output data okay each function performs some processing it takes from it takes some input data and it produces some output data so it can be considered as a processing station now let us see what are the symbols are, are used in order to draw this data flow diagrams okay so generally this dfd model uses a very less number of primitive symbols and simple set of rules why because it is easy to understand and it is a hierarchical model so these are the primitive symbols used for constructing the dfds the first one is a rectangle symbol 
the second one is a circle symbol next one is a directed arc or an arrow and the next one is a node symbol and the next one is a data store symbol okay now let us briefly discuss about these symbols so the first one is a rectangle symbol so this rectangle symbol is nothing but an external entity symbol that means in order to represent the external entities so what are these external entities so these are nothing but the it may be either any hard, hardware or software or any human uh, who are using our system the system in the sense our software okay so the persons uh, it may be either a person or it may be any external hardware or it may be any external software who uses our sys or software those are termed as a external entities okay so these external entities are represented by using a rectangle symbol external entities are real physical entities external to the software system which interact with the system by inputting the data to the system or consuming the data produced by the system right that means this external entity how they are interacting with the software just by giving the input to the system and just by getting the output from the system and sometimes these external entities are called terminator source or sink okay so the external entities are also called as terminators or source or sink now coming to the next symbol that is a circle okay this circle symbol is used to represent the process or a function okay so it is uh, termed as a function symbol okay so for example if you consider a function search book okay it is represented in this manner like uh, first we draw a circle and within that circle you need to annotate that circle why because you need to know wh what that function is performing right what and you need to know what is that function okay so for that purpose you need to annotate annotate in the sense you need to name that circle okay so this is how we represent the function in data flow diagrams okay and this circle is also called as a process symbol or bubble symbol or transform symbol okay so generally the function names represent some activity and function names should be verbs itself next symbol is data flow symbol okay a data flow symbol is nothing but a directed arc or an arrow which is used uh, which is used to represent the data flow that between the two processes or between an external entity and the process okay the arrow this arrow in the di in the directed arc the arrow represents the data flow between two processes or between an external entity and a process that is in which direction the data is moving okay so a directed arc or a line is used as a data flow symbol to represent data flow in the direction of an arrow in the direction of an arrow between two processes or between an external entity and a process and generally these data flow symbols are annotated by the data what they are carrying okay for example if you consider uh, like a search book okay if you let us consider the previous function symbol that is search book okay so for this search book the input may be a book name that means we give some book name as an input to the search book function now what the search book function will do it takes that input that is it takes that book name and it will perform searching and it produces some output like the details of that particular book okay so now we can draw this directed arrow towards search book okay towards that search book next symbol is data store symbol that is the two parallel line symbols okay a two parallel line symbols are used to represent the data store symbol what is this data store actually data store is nothing but a logical file a logical file can be any data structure or a physical file on disk each data store is connected to a process by means of data flow symbol okay each and every data store it will be connected to the process symbol so if you consider in this example here we are having a data store which is annotated by books and here we are having a process that is find books okay 
so each and every data store will be direct uh, like uh, it is um, connected to any process okay so the direction the direction of the arrow that is uh, the direction of this directed arrow will represent either a reading from or writing into the data store if at all the arrow is pointing towards the data store then it indicates that we are writing some information into the data store or if at all the directed arrow is pointing towards the process then it indicates that that particular process is reading some information from the data store that means it is taking some input from the data store and the last one is the output symbol so this uh, generally we will not uh, make use of this output symbol uh, why because uh, most of the softwares we uh, we very less frequently we generate the hard copies okay so whenever any hard copy is generated in any like whenever you are developing any software in order to represent that hard copy we will be making use of the use of this output symbol okay this output symbol is used when a hard copy is produced so now coming to the another symbol that is alternate symbol of the data store so the data store we are representing by using two parallel lines right at the same time we can represent the uh, we can represent the data store by this symbol also so it is a, a kind of rectangle which is op opened at uh, the left hand and at the right hand we are having two lines two close ends okay so this is the alternate symbol for data store so now let us see some example like so here we had uh, drawn a data flow model of a car assembly unit okay so in order to develop a car that is in order to produce a car we need to perform certain activities that is certain we need to uh, undergo certain process okay so first the first thing is we need to fit the engine next we need to fit the doors next we need to fit the wheels and finally we need to paint and test so after painting and testing the car is that is a new car is generated that is developed okay so now in order to accomplish th this uh, process generally we require certain items okay so those items we can uh, we can get it from the stores okay so generally in order to fit the engine we require uh, we require the engine and we require the chassis store so that's nothing but uh, the body okay so so for that purpose we are uh, taking the we are taking the those certain items from these uh, two data stores that is from the engine store we are get, we are getting the engine and from the chassis store we are getting the body structure okay now we had fitted okay so now the engine is ready so now we need to fit the doors okay we need to get we can get these doors from the data store that is sorry door store okay from the door store we get the doors and after getting it we fit the doors okay now our car is partially assembled okay just we got a uh, st um, partial structure of the car next thing is we need to fit the wheels okay so in order to fit the wheels we need to get the wheels okay we can get the wheels from the wheel store data store okay so from the wheel store we had we obtained the wheels and we had fitted the wheels so now the assembly of the car is done so after assembling the car so do we use it directly in that manner no we require some kind of colors right we so based on our based on uh, our requirement we paint it and after painting that color uh, that particular car we test ride it okay so once this process is completed that is the painting and testing is completed now our car is ready for use okay so in this manner we can re we can represent we can represent the data uh, data flow models okay next coming to the some of the important concepts associated while constructing this data flow models the first one is the synchronous operation if two bubbles are directly connected by a data flow arrow they are synchronous that means immediately once uh, a process has has been completed then immediately the next process will be started okay so if you consider here 
we are having two different process one is the read numbers and the other one is the validate numbers okay so read numbers process what it will do so whatever the data items that are given as the input to it it is just reading those numbers and it is just producing those numbers as a output now what validate number process is doing it is checking whether it is a number or not it is validating whether it is a valid number or not so it is taking a output of read numbers as a input okay so here these two pro processes are taking place in a synchronous manner okay in short we can say that if two processes are connected by a directed arrow are connected by a directed arrow directly by a directed arrow then it leads to the synchronous operation next one is asynchronous in the asynchronous there is no directed arrow between the two process rather they are connected via data store okay so if you consider this example here what is happening first we are reading the numbers so now those numbers are stored in the numbers data store and from numbers data store we are giving a give we are giving some input to the validate numbers and now the validate number process what it is doing it is checking whether it is a number or not okay so here these two process are not directly connected rather a data store is used to connect these two process okay so such a kind of uh, operation is termed as a asynchronous operation now coming to the most important concept in this data flow diagram that is data dictionary always a data flow diagram is accompanied by a single data dictionary that means in the data flow model we can have any number of data flow diagrams any number of dfds so based on the decomposition we can have any number of dfds but for all the dfds we will be having a single data dictionary what is this data dictionary this data dictionary a uh, contains the list of all data items that are appearing in the data flow diagram for example if you consider this uh, this figure in this figure we are having the data items like a number and valid number okay so this could be an item or a member of the data dictionary it means in wa whatever the data items that appear in the dfd whatever the list of data items that appear in the dfd are grouped together to form a data dictionary and this data dictionary not only contains the simple data items but it also con contains the composite data items and the definition of all those composite data items okay for example if at all you are having a data dictionary entry like gross pay equals to regular pay plus overtime pay then it indicates that a gross pay is represented as a regular pay and overtime pay okay now coming to the importance of this data dictionary this data dictionary provides all engineers in a project with standard terminology for all data that means a consistent vocabulary for data is very important because different engineers tend to use different terms to refer to the same data which causes unnecessary confusion so that means let us consider we are we want to annotate a variable and in that variable uh, the result of some arithmetic operation uh, let us consider some addition okay the result of some uh, arithmetic operation like plus is is stored okay so now i may feel that sum is the opt uh, suitable one to we uh, we name that variable some other engineer may feel that add is a, a suitable one okay so in this manner for in order to annotate a single variable different engineers may think in different manner so i may not understand the other terminologies and at the same time my terminology may not be understood by the others so in order to overcome that it's better to use a universal terminology so that one we we can get it from the data dictionary so in this data dictionary generally who is giving the data uh, data item names that is the person who designs so whatever the uh, designer uh, whatever the designer had given had given annotations for the variables okay the same annotations that is the same variable names can be uh, used by the rest of the engineers also next 
The data dictionary provides the definition of different data structures in terms of their component elements while implementing the design. So as I said you we are also representing the composite data items ok. So the definition of uh, various uh, composite data items are also represented in this data dictionary. This data dictionary also helps to perform impact analysis that is it is possible to determine the effect of some data on various processing activities and the effect of various processing activities on some data and it is also useful when one wants to check the impact of changing an input value type or a bug in some functionality so sometimes whenever you come across uh, errors so generally we perform bugging right that is nothing we try to trace out what would be the reason for that error so for uh, during that tracing we can make use of this data dictionary why because it contains the entire information of all the data items and the drawback of this data dictionary is uh, it will be difficult to represent the data items for la large scale projects why because typically in the large uh, large uh, large scale systems that is a uh, large scale projects we can have thousands of data dictionary entries so if at all uh, the size of this data dictionary is increasing then uh, and sometimes it will be difficult to remember all those data items ok but that problem uh, can be overcome by case tool that is nothing but computer aided software engineering ok so this case let us discuss in the upcoming classes ok case tools capture the data items appearing in the data flow data flow di diagram automatically to generate the data dictionary so obviously case in the sense computer aided software design so here what it is doing means it identify what are the frequently used data items ok so uh, what it will do it automatically generates what are the data items that are required for the typical projects that is for the large scale projects so that designers do not have to put much effort on creating the data dictionary so for example the queries may be made to find which data items affects which processes a process affects which data items the definition and the usage of specific data items etc so the case tool support queries about definition and the usage of data items based on which it can automatically generate the various data items now coming to the data definition in the data dictionary composite data items are defined right ok so in order to represent uh, in order to define those composite data items we will be making use of some uh, primitive operators that is some primitive symbols are used in order to uh, represent the data definition items ok so the first one is a plus symbol here plus does not indicate the addition rather it indicates a composition of two data items ok for example if at all we are having a data item A and B ok so if A plus B is given it indicates that A plus B represents data A and B ok plus indicates the composition of two data items next one is a rectangle brace uh, in a rectangle brace we write a data item we, we write as a set of data items and these uh, set of data items are uh, separated by a comma so generally this is used to represent the selection for example if at all you are having like in a rectangle base if at all you are having like a comma b so it indicates the occurrence of either a or b if at all you are having like a comma b comma c then it represents either a or b or c that means this is used to represent the selections among the data items next one is a, a bracket symbol so whatever that is placed within this bracket symbol it indicates that it is an optional data item ok in order to indicate the optional data items we make use of this bracket ok for example if at all you are having like a plus within the bracket b is given then here we can say this b is optional one that means b may occur or may not occur so this uh, entire uh, data item the meaning of this entire data item is either a or a plus b ok 
next one is a paranthes that is a curly braces okay so this paranthes represents iterative data definition the, it is used to represent the iterative data definition so generally this paranthes is uh, followed by some numeric value uh, it indicates like whatever the data item that is placed between the between these paranthes okay it will iterate those many number of times for example in the parenthesis within the parenthesis you had given a name okay and this uh, parenthesis is followed by a numeric value of 5 it indicates that the name data is repeated 5 times okay in the same way we can make use of the star symbol which represents zero or more instances of name data okay and the next symbol is equals to equals to represents equivalence that means uh, let us consider we are having like a equals to b plus c b plus c b plus c in the sense b and c okay so this indicates a represents b and c a represents b and c okay and coming to the last symbol that is uh, the comment symbol so this is the same symbol which is used for commenting the lines in c programming language okay so in whenever in any in the data dictionary you want to write any comment lines we can make use of these symbols in order to represent the comments okay so this is all about the data uh, definitions of uh, da uh, data items and the operators that are used for uh, defining the composite data items okay so with this i will uh, end with the important concepts of data flow diagrams in the next revision session let us continue with the examples of data flow diagrams thank you